Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I just got another one of those little nuggets, and I want to share it with you. There are times when we wonder why God allowed that good person over there, who's a born-again Christian, to become a paraplegic. Why did God allow that person to go blind? Why won't God heal this one, that one, or the other one? Why didn't God tell that person uh, not to do something? And look, they're hurt or they're dead. You know, if God's all powerful, why not? Well, you listening? The first gift God gave us besides the breath of life was free will. It's called choice. And when we get all caught up wondering why God allows some horrible things to happen to people, trust me, it doesn't mean that God didn't try to prevent it. It just meant that it happened outside of God's will. Even though he will still work all things together for our good, but it didn't mean it was God's will because he allowed it. It didn't mean God turned a blind eye. That he did it out of spite. It didn't mean that God doesn't care. Life happens. And there are times. You know, that's why the Bible says. To. You want to go to God. In every aspect of your life. You want to consult with him. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. Now, here's some of the ways he directs our paths. There are times, I remember one time a guy told me this story. There are times when we don't feel like doing something that's naturally or normally fun to do. Something that we normally love to do. But nothing in us wants to go. Nothing in us wants to do anything but stay home. You know, sometimes that's God. Well, this person, he went with his friends to the beach. And there were a lot of rocky areas in the beach. And they did all right the first three times they went in. They died, they dove, they swam. They, you know, had fun and frolic. However, he was totally dry. He was tired. Nothing in him wanted to get back in the water. But nobody else was ready to go home. Had he listened to his own heart, he would have been fine. But because he listened to his friends egging him on to get back in the water, he took one dive too many. He hit his head and spent the rest of his adult life as a paralyzed para, uh, quadriplegic. The only thing he could move was his mouth, his fingers, his neck, and his eyes. Everything below his neck, except for his fingers, he couldn't move. Totally helpless. Couldn't wipe his own behind. Couldn't stand up at the toilet and pee. Couldn't walk over and put his pants on couldn't do squat just trying to have fun he didn't do anything wrong but listen there are times when that goes on in you your friends want to do something and you know you normally want to go you can't understand why there's nothing in you that wants to go you listen to that voice nothing in you wants to you stay your behind home Everybody in that car could be killed in a horrible crash or horribly maimed. That's worse. Because, hey, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. That's a good thing. But to be stuck in a body that is useless to you, that's hell on earth. Listen to that voice within. Hear me? Please, do everything you can to hear God's voice. Acknowledge him. Ask him, 
talk to him say lord if it's something where i can get hurt badly and you're telling me not to do it please if it's food poisoning at a restaurant and everybody wants to go out and eat but you know somehow the food i get will kill me or come close to it and do permanent damage put something in me that 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 feels really troubled put an alarm in me so that i won't place myself in undue danger that's why the bible says acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path you know how much god loves us one day i was in a car i'm gonna tell this story for the umpteenth time and i felt this warning all in me i don't know how i knew it you guys but i knew that an accident was assigned to me i felt it all in my fiber it was a very eerie uneasy feeling of being out on that road but i had some runs to make i had to take care of business so that's what i did and i presumably got in my car rebuked the enemy prayed took authority in the name of jesus and said hey god's gonna protect me got in the car crash after three close calls and coming home and resting i was determined to give somebody a ride home because they had helped me and my ex-husband and you know what happened after that all of a sudden i stopped at a stop sign i didn't stop i slowed down i didn't have the stop sign i had the right of way the person coming down the street had the stop sign and they were practically stopped while i was going down the dip slowly because the dip was sharp do you know that man sped up and hit me head on before i could clear the intersection that door hit me in my side glass and the windshield shattered everywhere you know what he said afterwards he said i have no idea i was stopping for the stop sign and then all of a sudden he said i don't know what happened but next thing i know i'm speeding up on you it was an assignment from the enemy god knew it i knew it because god showed me but dum diddy dum dum presumed on god's protection not realizing that the uneasy feeling i had was god's protection my car was total now god did protect me he protected the person that was riding with me that i was given a ride home but i didn't have to make that move my car could have stayed in the driveway and i would not have been without a car for the next three years we were going to get the car insured the very next afternoon because we were waiting for my ex-husband's check. Now, just got the car. Just bought the car. Cash. Used car. 3500 bucks. Gone. God showed me years later when I was still in that quandary. Lord, why did you allow it? Lord, that's the one thing in my life I don't understand. Finally, after five years of me rattling my marbles around in my little nugget here, God finally replayed the whole thing to me. That feeling you had? That was me. That warning you felt? Yeah, that was me. That close call number one? That was me. Close call number two, that was me. And close call number three, guess who? But no, you had to do what you wanted to do. I did everything I could to stop you from getting in the car in the first place. Boy, you talk about somebody crying. I felt so stupid. I cried my eyes out. I asked God, Lord, please, please forgive me. I am so sorry i always blamed you for that and all that time it was my fault being hard-headed and presumptuous 
think about it.